it was nothing really secret about that. It was more for the the camera, but just doing it first time with me, having a chance to to kind of work out with him, move a little bit, incredible honor. Uh, it made my whole trip, made my day. So now I just need to focus on the fight. Was it uh, your idea or his idea? It's the UFC that set it up, but they it, 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 he's my idol. So for me, it's just amazing that he accepted it and great privilege and great honor for me. You don't normally work out at these things, so you weren't going to plan to do it until you knew he was here, right? Uh, so you don't normally work out at these kind of things. You know, you, you don't like to do that. And knowing Hoist was here, did that make you do it? Yeah, normally I don't I don't work out, I don't do this stuff, but now it was, it was fun. Like, uh, they found a good way to, to make me move a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Has he always been somebody that you looked up to, George? Yes, always. Uh, I got bullied when I was young uh, at school by a bigger and uh, older uh, first peoples. And um, when I first saw the first UFC, I saw how he's, uh, he was the smartest one, the less intimidating of all, but the, the smartest. And... Uh, the way he won the, the tournament, it really inspired me, and uh, that's why I'm doing. I'm here right now, fighting for the title. How much influence has the Gracie family had on you? Because you've also worked with Henzo, obviously John Danner, and Henzo yes. Black Belt. How much influence has the Gracie family as a whole had on your career? Oh, they're influenced the whole world, not only me, the whole world. Without them, we wouldn't like, wouldn't be uh, the sport wouldn't wouldn't exist. Do you ever go back and watch the, the first few UFC events and see how far it's come? Of course I do. Uh, <laughs> I know the name of most of all uh, the old guys. I, I respect them. and it, it was a different era, different time. It, it was much tougher back then. It was real fight. No fight, no time limit. It was no weight class. It was it was a real thing, you know. It was, it was incredible. Do <laughs> you ever wish you could do that? I don't know. I would Because when I, I watched it back in the day, I remember I, we didn't know what to expect. You know, it was the first time it's been done recently in, in modern time. And actually, I was watching the tape back there. I thought maybe someone could die. And I, you know, we didn't know it was unknown. And these guys had the heart of they were so courageous of stepping in, in the cage at that time because it was unknown. They were the, the pioneer. I don't know if I don't think I would have have the courage to to do that at at that time. It was it was too much unknown. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have the, the courage. I would probably have stayed at school. <laughs> what was it then that actually provoked you to get into fighting with the UFC and the Octagon? What, was there a particular moment that you saw that yeah. really intrigued you? One time I was, at my, I was a teenager, maybe 15 years old approximately. I was at my friend's house and uh, it was like a little barbecue with his family and he rented a tape at the UFC, a VCR tape back in the day. And so um, I watched it and right away I got inspired when I saw that man on on the, the tournament, it really I, it makes sense to me, and I, from there I, I decided to, to focus on that, and I, I became obsessed of doing this. You mentioned uh, you're not a fan of like rule limits and, and stuff like that. Are there any other rules about the early days that you'd like to see implemented today? Yes, I believe. That's why I believe in my sport. I believe we put the the round to mimic boxing to make the sport more accepted. But if you really want to see who's the best fighter, I believe you should just let them fight. Maybe a 15-minute fight without round or 25-minute fight without, you know. And because sometimes when you stop the fight, it makes, uh, it, it stop the momentum and it, it could change the result of the fight. I believe if you want to see who's the best fighter, you just let them fight. So for me, I believe uh, the sport will be more legit, more real if it wouldn't be any round. Uh, maybe. It, the scoring system would be based on every five minutes, you know, they judge according to every five minutes of the fight, but I believe it should, this should change, it shouldn't be around. I believe it might happen in the, in the future, right? that's why I believe, you know. And most of fighters actually agree with me, most of them, most of them, if you ask, they, they believe like it's a fight, it should be a fight. If you want to see who's the best man, let them fight. Don't break the fight in the middle of it because of, you know, to back in the corner. It's supposed to be a fight. You want to see who's the best man, let them fight. I'm sorry? The, the one? Oh yeah, that, that, but that's, that is different. That was because this, is, this injury could occur and sometimes my job can affect, you know, it's interesting to a spectator point of view, but to see who's the real best fighter, sometimes one injury can occur and he cannot be 100% for his next fight. So I believe the eight-man tournament could could work but not on the same day uh, that's 
only what I believe uh, because I know I compete in karate in wrestling in different sport boxing sometimes you have fight many fights and, and I believe it's different because you have a tough fight in the beginning you fight a, a much tougher opponent than another one than another guy then you have to, to fight and, and could could uh, interfere in the in the result you know George you attend you could... a UFC before you fought for them I'm sorry did you ever attend a UFC as a fan before you fought for them yes I did uh, do you remember which one I did attempt, my first UFC was here in Vegas, it was uh, Tito Ortiz against uh, Ken Shamrock. Sporty. And I attempted and I walked into the octagon the night before the fight, I, I came with David Loiseau, one of my friends who actually fought in, in UFC, he fought for a world title, we were, we, we were aspiring one day to fight in UFC and I remember the day before uh, the fight. We walked and we, went, we found a way to get into the, the MGM Grand and, and we found a way to get into the cage and we were doing shadow boxing in the cage. Nobody was there to watch the cage. I couldn't believe it. Like, I could take a knife and rip it. You know, I kind of, <laughs> it could have canceled the whole show, but no, it was just crazy. Like, I, I found a way to... Like, it was no security. I just got in the cage and <laughs> shadow boxing had a workout with my friend. And I was a fan. I was not a fighter at uh, UFC back then. George, you could set a number of records uh, with a win in this fight. Uh, most wins, most wins in title bouts. You could also set a record for most fight time in the UFC. Do those things matter to you now, or are those, those the kind of things you'll look back to later? Is it right now just beating the number one contender? I, I will look back. Uh, right now I'm just focusing on Johnny Hendricks. I have a toughest, toughest fight in my career. I'm focusing on only one thing. and. Um, for sure later, uh, you know, one day I'll get old and whatever, you know. I'll look gonna look back at statistics. Yeah, I, I like statistics. It, it, it's gonna be fun, you know, but uh, right now I'm not f focusing on that. I'm focusing on be the best I can be and do the best I can do. How do you feel about being the guy who was chosen by the UFC to headline the, this 20th anniversary event? I feel uh, very privileged, uh, honored to have this and um, um, it's been 20 years and, and just grateful you know I'm very happy uh, UFC did uh, incredible uh, amazing for me they took care of me and I'm so happy here uh, treated like a king you know? and your first fight in the UFC was 10 years ago what are your memories of that first fight ah oh, god I was so nervous I um, you, you want a little story or something <laughs> all right at uh, my first fight in UFC I uh, fighting Carol Parisian so I was you know fighting in the prelims and they put us in a lock a, a little locker room maybe the size uh, half half of the mat and back then I, I was with three guys and when we got into the room the room was very narrow it was long but very narrow so we didn't have enough enough space to work out so I decided to take all the chair throw it out of the room and still it was very tiny to work out so I, w I was not working out, I was like waiting for me for the time to, to get ready and out of a sudden like a, like a, a no I heard a noise in the hallway like a third world war just break out and guess who's got into the room it was um, what is his name the, the big guy that fought Frank Mir it was uh, Tim Sylvia Wes Sim oh Wes Sim it was Wes Sim <laughs> Kevin Randleman Mark Coleman, the two of my idol that I saw fighting uh, before, uh, Goldberg, uh, Wesson Father, who's actually taller than Wesson, and Rico Rodriguez. So we didn't have enough space. So with plus with those giants, I was like, oh my god, I couldn't speak English at that time. I was very intimidated. It was my first time in <laughs> UFC, you know. And this guy goes, uh, Mark Coleman, get in, get in, get in, in the room. He goes like, who are you? I'm like. Hi, I'm Charles Sabia. And he goes like, who are you going up against? I'm like, uh, Carol Parisian. And he go look at me like this. Mm. He's like, you a wrestler? He's like, yeah, I wrestle. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm rooting for you. And then, then, then they, they all, that pandemonium broke, broke, broke out in the locker room. Rah! They got so agitated. I was like, oh my God. I was scared, you know? So funny when time come for me to get, to warm up, you know? I remember this guy was screaming at me. I was young, you know, I didn't understand what they say, but it was a lot of uh, F word that I cannot say <laughs> because I'm in the middle of it. It was like, you, you got F. And I, and I couldn't speak English. So I was like, they tried to motivate me. So, <laughs> but they were scaring me instead. <laughs> so I didn't have enough room to, to, to warm up because our room was so tiny. 
So I couldn't move. They were like more agitated than me, and I'm I was the one that was fighting. So they were going back and forth and hitting the walls, and I was like, my God, that's crazy. So I had to go in the bathroom, do some jumping jack, <laughs> and then Bert Watson exploded in the room like, ready to roll, <laughs> and and then. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, 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 I step up and I fought. That, that was my first experience in UFC. <laughs> have, it was, you seen, uh, have you seen Mark Coleman since then? Yeah, I did. I did see him a couple times. He's an incredible guy. He's a, he's a very nice guy. Um, it's just funny. You see one of your idols on TV and you don't know what, you know what all they are. But then you see him in real life. It's like, it's uh, it's funny. You know, it was a, uh, it was great, uh, great experience. You know, they, they they pumped me up after I looked back at this and it's a funny story to tell and I had a, I had a great time. George, it seems like every, every time we see you fight, the guy you're fighting is, maybe this is the guy that's going to finally yes. be able to take you out. It's normal. It's the number one contender. They always put the best guy. It's, you know, we don't have optional title defense. Like, but it's always the best guy that we're fighting, and I'm, I'm ready for that. That's what I want. Where Johnny fall in your mind compared to guys that you fought in the last four or five fights? Johnny is unique. He has a different style than all the guys that I've fought. Um, he has, he causes uh, a certain problem that the other guy does doesn't doesn't cause, but he has his own. I'm gonna cause him his own problem as well, so it's gonna be a tough fight, you know. For this, is the conversation that, that maybe he's the guy that to finally beat you is that warranted or is that hype on on media's part on UFC's part? No, it's true. It's true. Every every guy is dangerous, you know, and I have to. I cannot take nobody lightly. It's important for me that I uh, that I go there and I perform the best I could be. So